Welcome everybody to the first early morning session at WordCamp Orlando 2015. And uh, today I am going to talk about being an epic failure. So uh, I will very briefly introduce myself. Uh, I am Scott Mann. I'm the founder of HiForge. We are a boutique creative agency located here in downtown Orlando, founded in 2001. Uh, so I've been doing this for a little, little while now. Uh, our agency is uh, a little over a million in revenue last year. Um, and uh, to get to that point, uh, I went through 15 years of uh, basically giving away my business over and over again, repeatedly. And uh, I'm going to go through kind of uh, how that happened, uh, ways that we can stop that from happening, and uh, hopefully uh, ways that we can all work together as a team to not be epic failures. <laughs> so moving uh, to the free way of giving it away, uh, we're going to talk about the dangers of being too nice. Um, that is probably a, a genetic thing in my family, uh, being a little too nice. I have a long history of it. The name of our company is High Forge. Uh, that name came from uh, when we did a little bit of uh, family background checking. We found some really uh, cool and interesting things going back up the family line. And uh, uh, it turns out that the first business owner in our family was about 700 years ago. And uh, it was a smithy in the Scottish Highlands. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that business failed. And uh, I think that's about what's left of it there. <laughs> So uh, now let's move up into uh, the immediate family. My, uh, my grandfather, who was uh, born in the 30s, uh, he ran a cement business here in Central Florida for a while. Um, he was everybody's friend. I mean, literally everybody's friend. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, how he stayed in business as long as he did, but uh, he was giving it away every day. And uh, I can't tell you how many times he was out on a weekend laying somebody's driveway or uh, doing some work on the side of the road and not getting paid for it. Um, my mom, she's been a leathersmith for over 40 years. Uh, she's never once, one day in her life, been paid what she's worth. She does something that maybe 20 people on the planet can do. And uh, yeah, she charges like pennies on the dollar for, you know, she charges probably an average of maybe five bucks an hour for what she does. She'll spend 200 hours. What? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> We've fixed this recently, so. <laughs> so, uh, and now we'll get to my dad, who was, uh, he was a great influence on me. Uh, he was actually born in 1929, so I'm one of those people who had a very old dad. He was in his 40s when I was born. Um, but I grew up, uh, every memory I have uh, with my father was, uh, was giving something to somebody. Uh, he was a mechanic. He was known as one of the best mechanics in Central Florida for about 20 years. Uh, he used to work on jet engines when he was in the Army. Um, other mechanics went to him when they couldn't figure things out. Um, every hitchhiker he ever saw on the side of the road, he picked them up. It didn't matter what they looked like, what they were wearing, what color they were. We stopped. We picked them up. We took them wherever they wanted to go. Uh, anybody with a car with a hood up on the side of the road. Uh, it didn't matter if we, were, if we were late to church. It didn't matter if uh, we were trying to get somewhere. And uh, it didn't matter if, uh, you know, if my mom was pregnant in the car and we were going to the, he was still pulling over to help this person on the side of the road. Uh, and in fact, he'd probably pull over a lot faster if they looked like that. Uh, he, uh, he was always uh, helping out the ladies. I don't know what's up with that. But... Uh, <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the dangers of giving it away. Um, so when you give your business away, when you do something for less than what you're worth, uh, you're, you're giving away respect. Uh, honestly, you are. It doesn't matter how nice you are or what you're trying to do. When you're talking about business, when you're talk talking about trying to get ahead, when you're talking about doing something for a living, uh, it, it is extremely important to, to keep these dangers in mind specifically. These are the monsters on the side of the road. These are the hitchhikers that might actually not be good people that you're picking up. So uh, you're unable to grow. You can't pay your bills. Uh, you're going to run into cash flow issues. Um, and yeah, additionally, you're going to be unable to invest additional time in your business. 
So uh, never forget that that is one of the most important things you can remember in your business. The one thing you can never, ever get back is your time. Make sure you make every minute of it count for something. And we'll talk about the things that you can use that time for uh, towards the end of it. So moving right along down the road, uh, there are times when being nice is good. Uh, there are times when giving things away is a strategy. Not very often, but if you're going to give it away, make absolutely certain that it puts you in a strategic position to win from there. So uh, something that uh, uh, has a little bit of a ring to it, as WordPress professionals, we are open source people doing open source things. But if we aren't careful with our open source graces, we'll be left standing around making open source faces, right? Remember this. Uh, you're going to be that person. You've probably been that person before. Uh, but a great example of giving it away as a strategy. Back in 2004, uh, we were using movable type as an agency. Movable type decided, hey, you know what? Um, we're going to change our, our policy. We're not really going to give it away anymore. We're going to start moving towards a different model. Uh, WordPress stayed true to their roots. Their strategy from the beginning and always has been about giving it away. We're all in this room because that was what their strategy was. And it was an intentional strategy, and that's why we're all here. So uh, there is a big difference between giving it away and being very strategic with, with uh, what you're doing, so with your charity. Uh, so here are some words and phrases that if, if you've run a service-based uh, service business or if you run a products-based uh, business online, uh, at any point in time, if somebody has tried to engage you for business, uh, well, actually, this is a good question. How many people in here run service-based industries? Raise your hand. So, you know, service-based business? Okay, cool. Uh, Product-based businesses? Anybody in here? Product? Okay, specifically. Awesome. Perfect. So, uh, a lot of you in this room have probably heard these things. Uh, but for those of you who have maybe heard some of these, but not all of these, these will give you some of the tools to say, oh, I know that's a danger sign. So. Uh, Awesome things. Hey, can you do it cheap or free because we're about to get funding or national exposure and you'll get all our future work? Have you heard that one before? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've heard that line and let me tell you, I fell for it the first eh, maybe three times. Yeah, uh, no, no, no fun at all. We're a popular nonprofit. We'll give you credit and sponsorship credit on all our future events for tens of thousands of people. Uh, yeah, so let's be clear here. Nonprofits are awesome. We all want to help create a social impact in our community and, and give back for, for what we're able to do. But let me tell you, let me be the very first to tell you, if you don't already know this, nonprofits are businesses too. They're absolutely businesses. So don't forget that. And when they come in and try to trade for things, don't give it to them unless there is a very strategic purpose in mind. And I will also say this, the people who go to these nonprofit events are oftentimes not the people who are going to hire your business. So it doesn't matter if millions see that you're a sponsor of that event. You may not get any business from that at all and nobody in there may care about what you do or why you do it and it may not help your brand at all. So keep that very closely in mind uh, when you're trading business for exposure. Hey, please help us. Be a hero. Our stuff's broke. We'll pay you later. I promise. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I, literally, this just happened to us two weeks ago. Uh, we had a, a, a multi million dollar organization here in Orlando hit us. Their WordPress site had been hacked uh, and uh, everything was broken. And uh, they were like, hey, we're down. We're losing business immediately. Our CEO is giving a presentation tomorrow. Please, we need you to fix this. Uh, it, you know, invoice us. We'll get you paid right away. Uh, my answer to that was, absolutely, no problem. We're ready to get started. You have an invoice in your mailbox right now. If you click the blue button, you can pay immediately. As soon as we get that, we are off to the races. And that worked perfectly. They paid within 10 minutes, and the project went extremely smooth. We had them back up and running same day. We were the heroes, and we got paid. Go back three years, very similar event occurred. Uh, it was a manufacturing company out of Kissimmee. Uh, 
They were like, hey, fix our broken website. We fixed their website, sent them an invoice. We never heard from them again. So there's the two sides of the coin. Hey, do this for me on a discount. Do it for me for cheap. And I'll refer you to a lot of big companies I know, and they will pay you full price for what you're going to do. I know a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me be the first to tell you, yes, they probably do know a lot of people. But the chances of them actually referring any of those people to do business with you are very, very slim. Uh, the handful of times I've done this, uh, if, if I count up all the times that I did it and the amount of times that it turned into additional business, I would say maybe one out of 10. So uh, keep that in mind. I would stay away from that. Go ahead and jot it down, and I'll hit you up. We'll have a Q&A session at the end, so get you covered. Um, yeah. So. And the last one here, uh, I can't afford you. <clears throat> this, one, this one has some specific numbers, so you might have an idea of uh, how personal this one might be. I can't afford you, but I'll pay this flat rate of $8,000 for this extremely nebulous scope of work. I promise you, it is way simpler than you think it is. And I will, I promise, I will not be a pain in the ass. Whatever you do, I'm good with it. You guys probably can see a pattern going on here, but when you're in the moment and you're talking to another human being and they sound so sincere and you want to be a nice person, it is so easy to say yes to that type of work. So uh, yeah, that last one that, uh, that I did, um, yeah, we, we, we got paid $8,000 for uh, about 25K worth of work on that project. They were, in fact, one of the biggest pains in the ass clients we have ever had in our company. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to get back onto the road here. And uh, we're going to talk about discounting. This is one of the ways that you give it away. This is death by a thousand paper cuts. Discounting, you have no idea. And this is, this is let me tell you, when I first started, I had a handful of clients. I was discounting left and right. It, may, it had no impact. I was getting so much business. Every time I threw a discount out, oh, sold. It was so easy to sell by discounting. Five years in, I go into my accounting software. I pull up a report, just on a whim, to look at how much business I had discounted over the previous year. The number was staggering. I had no idea. I'd given away $50,000 in business over a year period just by saying, ah, yeah, sure, we'll do it for 10% less. Oh, you're a friend of a friend? Yeah, 15% off, nothing to it. You have no idea how much business you're giving away in little tiny nicks and cuts. Had, had you been able to go back and get the full value for all of that, uh, you would have been in a significant position to hire a new person or grow your business, get bigger offices, invest in new technology, you name it. So uh, you don't want to sell on price. Anytime you give a discount, you are telling somebody, I'm worth less than I told you I was. I'm worth less than I told you that was. Do you see how dangerous that is? That's not only are you reducing the value of what you're selling, but you're also telling the client, hey, I'm kind of a fib or two. That hurts. That, that destroys your trust. It destroys your integrity. Your, your honesty to the client. Uh, it, it, it seems small, and it's kind of on a subconscious level, but that's exactly what it turns into. So uh, any reduction on your prices. This also damages your future price integrity. You give a discount once, you better believe it. They're going to they're gonna expect it forever. And the second you say, oh, by the way, I, we need to do full price on the next one, they are suddenly not your best friend in the world. They are not going to be happy. But had you kept your full price start to finish, they would have respect for you. You keep that integrity. They're happy. There's never a moment where they're like, oh, man, I'm getting the rug pulled out from under me. It's a win across the board. Uh, and then this is important. Um, there's data on this, a lot of data. Go on to Google, do a search for double blind studies on discounting. And what you'll find over and over and over again is that Anybody who paid a lot more for something, perceived it after the project was done or after they received the product, they perceived it as much more valuable than the people who got the discount. It's amazing, amazing how that works. So uh, 
Moving back down the road, let's go down to some helpful, very specific tactics. These are actionable items. Um, these are ways that you can stay nice, but the key here is just not too nice. <laughs> It's free this time, the next one will be billable. I do this all the time. So uh, let's say we have a client that we did a project for, and we've been trying to sell them on a retainer. We tell them, hey, this is what our hourly rate is. You're definitely going to need us in the future for a lot of additional work. Uh, and uh, we're going to be a great service provider for you. We're going to be right there. If you don't have us on retainer, we can't promise to turn around very fast for you because our retainer clients come first, right? So you really want to do this. Um, and uh, sometimes, sometimes they come on board, sometimes they don't. If they don't and they come to us and they're like, hey, can you fix this one little thing on the website? Can you change this text? Or hey, can you move this picture around? Or whatever the case may be. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to say, yeah, hey, I'm going to be the nice guy. This thing's really only going to take 10 minutes. It's going to take 15 minutes. No big deal. I'll tell you what, we're going to do this one for free. Absolutely for free. The next one's going to be at our full hourly rate, just so you're aware. And guess what? There's no surprises. We have communicated clearly to the client, and now their expectations are perfectly managed. So now, the next time they hit us up, they're already expecting to get charged. And so when they hit us, they're already like, yep, hey, can you do this thing? Go ahead and build it. They are proactively telling us to bill them almost every time when we use this, this tactic here. It's a great way to be nice, but it's, it's only giving something small away one time to build a lot of goodwill for the future. Uh, and then this, this is the tactic that you need to absolutely use. Because let's all be fair here. Discounting is an important sales tactic. But if you're going to do it, you absolutely have to combat that undermining of trust that you might create. And the way that you do that is by having a fantastic reason for giving a discount. And there really are, these, these four items here are probably the most common ones um, and might be the only ones you ever need to use. But let's say you have a down season. Uh, let's say summers, you know, everybody's out on vacation. If you're service-based in industry, a lot of times people are off on vacation. Business is low uh, in the summer, and maybe you need to line up some projects. Um, you, can, you can say, hey, for, for July and August only, we're going to do a discount for so. We're doing it because this is our slow season, and we're sitting around twiddling our thumbs anyway. So there's a reason why we're going to give this discount, and it's a good, valid reason. Uh, or, hey, if you, if you come on board with our largest retainer, you know, 40 hours a month of work, or whatever the case may be, we will give you a discount on the hourly based on the volume because that will allow us to line up resources in a much more cost-effective method. So you just gave them another reason. Uh, if you prepay up front in advance, everybody knows cash flow is really important. Let's say it's a really large project, and maybe, maybe it's a bigger client who, you know, maybe they're cash flow rich. Um, they're looking for a discount. Maybe they're the type of client that just doesn't want to do business with anybody unless there's a little bit of a discount. Well, I can say, oh, yeah, well, hey, it's a $40,000 project. Um, we can do a discount, but only if you pay 100% of the project up front. Most of the time, they don't bite, but the fact that we made the offer of the discount makes us look like the good guys. So another great way to be nice without being too nice. Allowing late payments. This is, uh, if, you're a, if you're a, quote, nice business owner, this is one of the most painful things in the world. Um, up until two years ago, we had an average of between 60 and 100 overdue invoices out at any given time. I'm, I'm not the guy who's calling a client saying, hey, where's my money? That's not who I am. I'm not that person. Um, also, we're a small boutique agency. Every person on my team is a maker and a doer. We don't have administrative staff sitting around chasing people. I'm also not the guy who's going to call collections on a client. I, that's just not how I work. Um, but let me tell you, I was giving a lot of my business away. It was hurting our cash flow. It was hurting my ability to grow. And a lot of changes had to be made on that level. So when you stretch out payments, you are giving up your control. Um, and here's another, if you're dealing with small businesses especially, this is where it gets really dangerous. If you're stretching out payments with a small business, what happens if that small business owner gets in an accident? 
goes out of business, gets hit with an IRS audit, goes on vacation, doesn't come back. I mean, these are all things that have happened to us over the years. And let me tell you, when that happens, that stretched out payment becomes you just gave that business away and there is no way you're ever gonna get it back. And let me tell you, small claims court and going to collections, that almost never works. You're wasting your time when you should be making new things and moving on to bigger and better clients. Be wary of net terms. Uh, this is kind of a no-brainer. Everybody wants net terms. Uh, but let me tell you, if you open the negotiation up front, if you say, we don't start work until we get paid, and when the project is done, we don't hand you the assets until we get paid, there's no net terms there. That's how you do business. Uh, you've set the tone. However, if you go into a contract with a client and you don't talk about payment terms in your contract or, or in your paperwork or in your agreement with that client, if you don't talk about the terms up front, you better believe they're going to assume it's net 30 or net 45. Or in the case of some clients like SeaWorld, they're like net six months. So be very careful about who you're doing business with. And again, if you set the stage with the net terms in your contract, a lot of times it will, it will bypass all of, their other, all of their other accounting systems and make it so that you're the priority in their billing model. Yeah, uh, take a note, I'll, I'll answer that question in the, in the Q&A. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna actually burn through this real quick so I can open up some more questions. So uh, for some of the bigger clients, a lot of times if you're sending out invoices and uh, they're not getting paid, even though they agreed it was net 30 or net 15 or whatever the case is, but you're not getting paid until net 20 or net 60, a lot of times if they're a bigger client, they actually have a billing cycle. And if you're getting paid late every single time, Call their accounting, find out what their billing cycle is, and, and that will tell you what day your invoice is supposed to get out so that you will get paid on time every time. Uh, that one will save you a lot of money. Um, this is something that we don't do, but uh, I do know we have some other clients that do this with great success. Um, offer a discount if they pay ahead of time. Um, if, if you're trying to increase your cash flow, that's an awesome, awesome way to, to get paid a lot faster uh, with uh, medium and enterprise level clients. Um, there's a cool uh, local business uh, uh, software as a service company called ViewPost that actually allows you to automate that whole process in your billing cycle so that it automatically gives discounts to clients as they're paying uh, if they pay in advance. So um, this one's really tough. You know, uh, if you have clients that are always, always late, but they still eventually pay, those are the hardest clients to get rid of. And, and, and let me tell you, it's never gonna get fixed. They're always gonna be the same. So my advice with these types of clients is to put your foot down and let them make the choice of whether they wanna do business with you or not. Uh, and that usually works towards a uh, eventually losing the client type scenario. Um, or, uh, and this is my preferred choice, work towards replacing them with a faster paying client. It's really that simple. Uh, and, and there's no getting around it. So um, FreshBooks, ViewPost, QuickBooks Payments. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, this thing at the bottom, Invoice Sherpa, uh, that's actually one of the things that helped us go from 60 to 100 late invoices. Uh, we're down to about 15 overdue invoices right now uh, because we started using Invoice Sherpa. It basically is the mean guy for me. Uh, it's, uh, it's been pretty effective for us. So a uh, pretty cool little service. It can tie in with QuickBooks Online or something like that. And uh, it, will, it will automatically send out urgent reminders on a regular basis to your clients of, about uh, those late invoices. If there's anything that I can uh, impart with you today that you take with you, this is one of the most important. Uh, as nice people, it's one of the hardest things for us to say, hey, I did you a favor. It's so hard. We just want to get the work done, be awesome at what we do, and move on to the next thing, and, and fully expect the client to realize how awesome we were and how much above and beyond we went. We just kind of assume that. That's, that's what we are. We're givers in here. We're people pleasers. We want to win. We want to, we want to be the nice person all the way through. But let me tell you, 
this one thing changed the face of my company uh, with our clients more than just about any other thing. Um, when we do a favor now, there's a courtesy call or a courtesy email saying, hey, just wanted to let you know, we did this extra thing that wasn't in the scope. We thought it was really important. We didn't want to bill you for it, but we thought you might like to know. Or, hey, nonprofit, I know that you guys needed, uh, needed some help with that poster. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to do this one uh, no charge um, because we love what you do and we love your mission, right? We still send them, send them an invoice for our full retail rate, discounted 100%, but they see the number. And let me tell you, every time they come back to us, they're like, oh my gosh. In the past, they were like, they were always coming and wanting more and, and expecting us to be like, eh, yeah, we'll just do it. And they were angry if we ever said no. Ever since we started sending those invoices at 100% discount, every time they call us, it's with humility and it's with grace and they love us. They're like, thank you so much for that thing you did last time. We want to pay you for this one because they know how much we're giving away now. This one is also important. I'm just going to breeze through this one. Um, qualify your clients first. Um, a lot of times, it's really easy to meet with a client multiple times, three, four times, consulting. You're figuring out the discovery. You're figuring out what it needs to do. You're actually giving the milk away when you do that. You're, you're doing their discovery for them. And if you're not getting paid for it up front, you're making a great mistake. But uh, to qualify a client, you need to make sure that they have money, the money to do it, they have the time to focus on it, they have the want and the desire to do it, and that they have the power to buy. If those four things are not in alignment, I guarantee you, you will lose the sale 100% of the time if one of those things is missing. Getting a money commitment early is a big part of that. So uh, we used to do uh, planning up front and, and building a, a proposal and planning it all out, and then here's your quote. Uh, you know, 50% of the time we win the quote, 80% of the time it doesn't matter. For every quote that we didn't win that way, we just lost 5, 10, 20 hours of professional consulting and planning that was probably worth an intellectual value more than the, the project itself. Uh, now we get paid up front for discovery. And let me tell you, a, a serious client who cares about what you're doing, uh, they will pay up front. And in fact, when they do pay up front, that's them telling you that they're serious about doing business with you. If you don't get that, they're probably not serious about doing business with you. Uh, this is just a quick warning because this has been going around lately. I know of a, a couple small agencies or freelancers that this has happened to. Um, but uh, the most recent one is a, a, a quote deaf client reaching out and wanting uh, you to do something awesome for them. And uh, you'll give them a quote at full retail price. And uh, they will come back and say, hey, awesome. We're sending uh, payment for actually an extra 1000 bucks, right? OK. The second anybody ever tries to pay you more than what you are actually invoicing them for, I guarantee you 100% that it is a scam every single time. So uh, we've never been hit by that, but I know people that have. And I just wanted to, uh, to, to let people know to watch out for this one. Um, because what they do is they'll use somebody else's stolen credit card You'll send the extra $1,000 to another vendor that is overseas and can't get paid any other way. And as soon as you send that extra money to somebody else, uh, you're going get to get a charge back. And that charge back will take all of that money for the whole project away from you. And the money that you, the extra money that you sent, yep, you're on the hook for that too. So be very, very careful. Uh, this one, not raising your prices. We had some retainer clients from back in 2002 that in 2006 we had never raised prices on. Uh, that's another way of being too nice and giving it away. Make sure you train clients up front. When you bring them on board, put them on a retainer uh, that you say every year we are going to review this retainer or every six months or whatever the case is. And uh, we're going to adjust prices accordingly, whether it's a cost of living increase or whether it's a size of our and experience of our business increase, whatever it is. Make sure they know it's coming. Because if, if you don't warn them up front, when it comes, they're going to be upset. But if you train them up front, they will expect it and they will respect it. And uh, so going on to the pro bono stuff I touched on earlier, uh, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. 
there are always great nonprofits and friends and family and people that you love and, and, and things, uh, things that you really care about that are going to need your help. Um, even if you're not able to do it, uh, these are the kind of people that will, that will give you uh, a, a guilt trip until you eventually do it. Be very careful about that. Um, and the way that I would say uh, that you can, you can fix that is if someone suggests to you that you do something free for them, I suggest that you say no. My recommendation is, is for you to choose the missions that you want to help. You choose who you want to help. You do the research on the organizations or the people that you're going to help, and you decide, you know, are they a legitimate organization? Are they going to be around for a long time? By helping them, is it going to help my business? Am I going to learn cool things? Am I going to work with cool people that I want to work with? Those are the people you want to give to. Those are the people that you want to, you want to do pro bono work for, the ones that you chose. And to wrap it up, there are three things that you can get from giving away your time. You can get money, you can get knowledge, and you can get relationships. What I'm going to suggest to you today is that you're automatically going to get knowledge and relationship from every single thing that you do. So why not all three? And be on fleek. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the floor uh, to questions. We've got about 10 minutes or so. So uh, seriously, hit me. I'm very transparent. I will give you all of our secrets, tell you everything that we've done wrong, whatever the case is. So yeah. <laughs> David, uh, for you, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. All right. So this is actually an easy one. It's easy because it's so complicated. The reality is, is you never know how long a discovery phase is going to be because, uh, you know, the great example is you look at the coastline of Florida, right? And if you look at it from a satellite, you know, boom, it, it'd take you three seconds to draw that shape. If you take that same satellite view and zoom into the coast of Florida, you'll realize it is the most jagged, complicated piece of land on the face of the planet. And if you had to trace it, it would take you years if you had to do it by hand at the lowest level of detail. So when you're doing discovery for a, for a project, it could be as simple as that one quick outline or you realize you ask one question and the client comes back with an answer that you realize, oh my gosh, we are now going down the rabbit hole. So what I like to do is, is I like to basically say, hey, you know, in my mind, I think this project's going to be less than 20K or more than 50 or whatever the case is. In my mind, I'll probably do something somewhere in the neighborhood of a 10% guess. But to the client, I'm giving them a flat rate. Hey, to do discovery on this type of project, uh, it's going to be $2,500, and you're going to get an awesome document at the end of it with wireframes and a list of all the functionalities, what we are going to do, what we're not going to do, and then from there, with that document, you'll be, all, be able to take that and go out to bid. We'll put a quote on it, all of the above, right? So the number ranges. For a simple project, we might try to charge somebody 1000 bucks. For something that we think might be more complex, we might charge 2500 but we might, and here's where things get interesting. Let's say we go over on our estimated labor on the discovery for the project. We usually eat that. The fact that we got the money up front means that they're serious about doing business with us. And if we're the ones, and if it's a lot more complicated than we expected, there's a really good chance we're going to get that business when we give the document. So, so we will eat the rest of the discovery. And we look at that as a, a partnership share, basically, in, in doing the work together with that client. So uh, usually we're, it's, it's a relatively modest discovery price, and it's always, it's always an easy sell. It seems like it has been that way for the last couple of years. So. Uh, yeah, in the back. Uh, this right here, so this is very strategic. So I'm hoping 
that by giving this information away, that everybody in this room is going to be like, hey, that guy's a really nice guy. We want to do business, business with him, right? David just gave me a ton of free work. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> what, what's the project, by the way, that you're going to hit us with? Yeah, OK. I'm guessing it's probably 400 hours of labor for you know pro bono, of course, right? Yeah, so, but it's going to be awesome stuff. No, uh, this, this, is, this is my way of giving back. Um, everybody in this room should be doing exactly what I'm doing, and a lot of you probably already are. When you blog as a thought leader, when you, when you stand up and, and tell people, hey, this is how I do my business, you're, you're sharing with them how to grow their business. And the way that I look at it is this, especially here in Orlando, this is, this is a small community that's growing exceptionally fast exceptionally fast and I believe that by helping even one single business that that raises the waters here in Orlando and when the waters rise in Orlando all of the ships in this room will rise with it and that's that's why uh, yes Well, again, you have no idea what it's going to be at the end of the at the end of the day. So that 10% is a wild guess sometimes. So it, 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 you can just pick an arbitrary number, and usually you're going to get better and better at choosing what that flat rate discovery fee is. Uh, the more projects that you get, you kind of kind of have to earn your chops on it a little bit. I hate to say it, but that's the reality of it. When you're doing any kind of guesswork, you really are getting a feel for it, and you want to learn from that estimate. You want to learn from it. When everything's said and done, you need to go back and look at your first guess and say, oh, yeah, I was way off there. Here's where I was wrong. Here's where I was wrong. Here's where I was wrong. The next time I do it, I will not make that same mistake. You'll say that in your head. You'll still make the same mistakes, but you'll make them with less, uh, less margin, basically. So, yeah. Go ahead. Right. 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 Yeah. You're you're exactly right. So uh, I'll give you just a quick example, and I also this this brings up a, a greater topic that that is very important for Orlando. But uh, going back to your point, we had a, a client last year. They fired us because we were too expensive, flat out. They were like, we can't afford you. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to let you go. Uh, two weeks ago, we were contacted by the vendor, the cheaper vendor that that client had hired. That cheaper vendor hired us at full price to fix their mistakes. So don't lower your prices, stick to your guns. But there's a, one more thing I want to say here, which is that in Orlando, there is, um, and, and this may hold true in a lot of cities, but in Orlando, there is kind of a culture of jacking your vendors down, like undercutting your vendors. Like everybody wants a deal in Orlando. You go to a place like New York, and, and they're like proud that they're paying their agency top rates. They're like, oh, you're only paying your agency that? Ew. Orlando has a deal culture, right? It's up to all of us in this room to help change that culture. So let's all, let's all work together to, to just choose what our value is. So uh, yeah, Chris? Chris? 